Hello, I am Wanderer001, and no, this is not a Tom Bin mask. This is the mask that my employer provided to me uh, as part of the coming back to work protocol, we'll, we'll call it. Uh, they came in a nice little five pack, which was very generous of my employer. However, this mask is horrible. It is a two layer cotton, non-adjustable straps, and it's, it's that square mask, which just sits very, very poorly on your face. So this, well, better, I suppose, than, you know, the disposable masks and very generous of my employer to provide was garbage. So a quick search online for best cloth mask and at the top of most of those lists, Tom Bin. So I went out and I purchased all the currently available versions. So version one, version two, and version three of the Tom Bin masks. And here is what those look like. Each of the masks have their own benefits and drawbacks, depending on what you're looking for in a cloth mask. Now, this being a slightly new endeavor for me and never having to actually research a cloth mask before, or realistically ever, this, this was a learning experience for me. So let me share with you what I found out. Here you have the version one, which has a nose bridge right there that's kind of like the twist tie that you get on a loaf of bread. It is a two layer system composing of 65% polyester and 35% cotton blend fabric. The ear loops right here, nice and stretchy. Interior there has a nice feel to it and it is the lightest of all of the current offerings in that that polyester cotton blend breathes easier than the other options. However, unlike the version two and version three, you do not have a neck lanyard. So you will do the hang off your ear like you do with the cloth or paper masks. The version two is also a two layer system. However, now it is composed of a 100% cotton twill fabric. I will say that all of the ones that we're looking at right now are the medium large versions as that's what I thought would be most comfortable for my face. Uh, Tom Ben's website does have a handy measurement guide if you're looking to find out what will work best for you. Up here you can see that they have substantially increased the nose bridge making it more adjustable, more substantial, and easier to fit around your nose. The one complaint I have with the version two is that it is this green color as opposed to the black that you get with the version one and the black that you get on the exterior of the version three. So version two, the medium large, doesn't quite go with as many things as the version one or version two. You have your ear loops, nice stretchy ear loops like you had on the version one. However, now we have this neck strap, which I will admit is really nice, especially when you're wearing this for long periods of time and you need to go outside and get that air, you just drape that around your neck and you're good to go. It also acts as an adjustment for the ear loop should you need to shrink this down. And there we go, that's what the interior looks like for the version two. Now the version three is the heaviest of all of them when it comes to breathing because it is a three layer system. The exterior layer is 65% polyester, 35% cotton blend, while the filter layers or the middle and inter interior layer here are 100% cotton blend. It is the largest of all of the masks even though this is the medium large version. So you should be able to open your mouth very wide. Here you can see the nose bridge is nice and substantial just like it was on the version two. However, you also notice when I flip this over that the interior layer is a different color as opposed to the exterior layer. It's easier to tell them apart as to which is which I suppose. Again, in a situation that we're currently in, color options are not really the primary thing that you should be thinking or considering. Again, we have the nice stretchy ear loops and the version three also has the neck lanyard which will allow you to adjust the ear loops but also hang this around your neck. The version three also offers the most mouth room of all the options. Now, seeing these in front of a camera, not as useful as seeing them on a person. So let's take a look at that now. So this is the version one. I opted to do the actual lapel mic here to give you an idea of the actual sound that you can get from these because that's one of the other things to consider is how you sound with something muffling your face. So version one, 
Here you go, side profile. Underneath, it's a nice size mask. Again, this is the medium large. And you can see there is a little fog up of my glasses. It's just something that wearing glasses, you have to get used to with a mask. You can adjust the nose bridge there to cut down on it a little bit, or you just kind of move your glasses a little further down. So here, you can kind of see me breathing in. The mask does suck in a little bit, but not terribly, again, because it's that blended material. So let's try this. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers and A-E-I-O-U, and you can see it slipped down a little bit when I opened my mouth a little larger. So again, from the side profile, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, slipping. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. A-E-I-O-U. From top, underneath once again, and opening your mouth really, really large. Ah, so it, it will slip down a little bit. Here we have the version two, which is the dual layer cotton all over and it has the more substantial nose bridge. So I will say, as you see, sucking in, it does collapse on itself more because it is a thicker blend, but you can also hopefully see that my glasses are not fogging up as much with this because it has the more substantial nose bridge. Side profile there, you can see it has the neck lanyard and adjustable strap. So I actually have these a little tighter so I get a nicer seal along the side. Underneath there, enough space that it goes under your chin, which is something I really appreciate in masks because when they stop at your chin like that, they just don't do anything. So again, you can see I'm breathing heavily to try and fog my glasses up. It's happening a little bit, but not as much as with the version one. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. A-E-I-O-U. Not much movement on this one. Side profile. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. A-E-I-O-U. And coming back to the front, uh, uh, so that was a wide open for me. Again, I might not have the biggest mouth in the world, but you'll notice this did not slip down as much as the version one did. Now, it is a little more laborious to breathe through this compared to the version one, and it's because the version one is that combination material is it bad? It's up to you, but realistically, coverage, aside from the color, and I complained about that before, but aside from the color, I like the version two quite a bit. And here we have the version three, which is the largest of them all. In fact, I don't even feel the mask moving at all when I'm talking right now. I am fogging up a little more than I was with the version two, and I think that's just because even though it has the thicker nose bridge, like the version two, because the fabric has three layers, it's a little trickier to form a seal around my face because of that extra layer. It's still not bad. And in fact, you can see it's not really moving aside from that little fogging I had before. You have the ear loops and the neck lanyard, which adjusts the side, you know, the ear loops as well. Uh, you would normally just hang it off. I'm not showing you that because, well, I just don't want to show my face on camera. But you can see I'm breathing in, the fabric is coming in a little bit, and it, it's not terrible. It actually feels a little easier to breathe with the version three than the version two, even with that third layer, because it has that extra space. So side panel there, it has extra space for you to open your mouth really large. It does come much further down your neck, under your chin, than the version two and the version one. So that's something to consider depending on your facial structure. So. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. A-E-I-O-U. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. A-E-I-O-U. And then coming to the front, ah. So it comes down a little bit off the nose, but that's probably because it comes down a little further on my neck. If it was up a little higher, I wouldn't have to worry about that quite as much. The version three, like the version two, has the more substantial nose bridge, which I like, because you can pin it down and keep it further away from your eyelids, which is what my wife doesn't like with the flat square ones. That was an example of version three. Just for a quick point of reference, this is the mask that was provided to me by my employer. 
single layer, it's pulling my ears horribly. It, it, it really doesn't offer much in the way of anti-fogging because it comes like right up to my eyelids and it does not come that far past my chin. Now, as my avatar shows, I do have facial hair. With none of the Tom Bin masks, I had any problems. This one in particular, I could feel it inching up as it's scratching against my beard and fogging up my glasses horribly. So, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. A-E-I-O-U. Side profile there. You can see it really just kind of scoops it. It's, it's not great. It is not a great mask. And opening my mouth really wide, ah, didn't pull from the top, it came off from the bottom, which does not form that good seal that you need when you have a mask. And the last one for reference is a standard paper mask that you might pick up. Now these are disposable, one-time use. The beauty of the cloth masks are you can wash them and not have to just throw them out and throw away your money. But cloth mask for uh, reference, Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, A-E-I-O-U. Side profile, I do appreciate the elastic ear loops on the paper masks, and they do, if you pull them down or open enough, come down past your chin nicely compared to that white mask. But, ah, if you ah, open your mouth, ah, it pulls down from the top if you don't have it pinched up nicely. All right, so we have an idea of the fabric makeup, we have an idea of how they look on a normal sized face with facial hair. The next question is, well, let's talk about pricing. So your version one is $13. However, part of that $13 goes to giving a mask away to charity. Version two is $9. And version three, which is the biggest in the three layers, is $16. Now, washing these, you're gonna wanna get yourself a bag you know, a washing bag. I'll have a link for that down in the description to kind of keep these away from your other clothes and getting banged around too much. As you might suspect, version one being the combination blend, dried the quickest when hang drying, version two was next, and then version three took the longest because it is that three layer system. Tom Bin also offers the version one blueprints, so if you feel like attempting to make your own mask, you can. However, myself, being somebody who hasn't attempted sewing really since middle school, and as you can see here, the prospects of that back in the day were not the greatest, I opted to purchase them. However, I will leave a link in the description where you can actually find their pattern to make your own should you want. Whether you're looking for a company that's in the US that's making quality masks or one that is socially aware in if you purchase version one, a donated mask will be given away. They give you the pattern. So all in all, quality and company wise, having never looked at Tom Bin before, nor have I looked for masks before, I was pleasantly surprised. So if you, like me, if you do a search on YouTube or Google for best cloth masks, I'm gonna throw my hat in the ring and say Tom Bin is up there, just like all the other reports I found. I have been Wanderer 001, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.